This is the Frap Tools 321 Scale Flip Shift Combine module. It has a lot of nice little touches that has quickly made it one of my favorite utility modules. It has three channels. Each channel has its own output. There's also a pair of summing outputs along the top. The one on the right sums all three channels regardless of what you have plugged into them. The one on the left only sums together the channels that do not have something plugged into their outputs. That means you can go ahead and use it as a two to one mixer and use the third channel for something completely different. I'm gonna go ahead and take that special semi-normal output, plug it into my data so you can see what's going on here. That goes around to my mother 32, which I'll put on drone mode right now, and turn up one of the inputs, the sawtooth input. Each channel on the 321 has up to two times gain. This is a rare feature in mixers and something is very useful, which I'll show later. So I'll go ahead and crank up an input if I want to, or take it back down and level. There's also a phase invert switch underneath each gain control. So you can go ahead and change the phase without changing the level. There's also no center position where you have to carefully null out the control just to get silence. Flip it back. Each channel also has a voltage offset control with a range of minus eight volts to plus eight volts. It too has its own switch where I can just take it out of the circuit without changing my voltage setting. With this set of controls, I'm going to show three different applications. One, just mixing audio waveforms in a normal voice. Two, offsetting an envelope generator set to loop control so that its normal unipolar above zero voltage can be centered as a bipolar voltage and used as an LFO. And also to adjust for signal levels in Buchla and Surge legacy modules, which tend to have a much lower audio level than your typical Eurorack module. I'm taking the sawtooth and square from the Mother 32. Just to make things a little bit clearer right now, I'm going to go ahead and turn them off because you don't need to see their displays anymore. And I'm also going to take an output from the mother's VCF and also plug it into here with the data so you can see what's going on in the patch. The yellow signal is the direct output from the 321. The pink signal on cable is the filter output, which currently has a filter cutoff to turn up all the way, so we can see what the mother 32 is doing to this signal we're sending to it. As I turn up the level control for my sawtooth and start boosting it, Look at that pink line. You'll notice that it's clipping asymmetrically. The bottom half is clipping way before the top half. The top half has sort of this slope in it. You can particularly see this at a lower frequency where the bottom half is just getting cut off. I'll knock it back down to halfway. And let's start to bring up our square wave. Here we run into a common problem we find when mixing two VCOs together. The yellow trace in the data is just being clipped by the display. It's actually extending beyond the limits to plus or minus 10 volts. But once again, the pink signal, the output from the Mother 32, is being restricted to mm, roughly plus six, minus four and a half volts or so. If you want to mix two VCOs together or two waveforms together in Unity, and you don't want to overdrive an input, the 321 has a special switch that cuts the output by six dB or by a factor of two. That immediately brings it back down to the voltage range that the Mother 32 expects. So it makes it much easier to decide whether or not you're going to overdrive an input. Without that minus 6 dB control, you'd have to cut the input attenuators back quite a ways to not overdrive a signal downstream. If I was to bring in a third waveform, such as the output of my disting over here, the yellow input, crank that up as well, well, it's really easy to overdrive then. That's where you really appreciate having that signal cut if you want it. But I'll take the disting out for now. We'll be using that later. There's a number of timbres you can get just by using the phase invert switches and selective overdriving. For example, here's the two waveforms in Unity. I overdrive them. You hear subjectively a little bit of high-end roll-off, a little bit of a bass boost. That's a classic characteristic of a Moog modular and other classic Moog synths, and is present in the Mother 32. Letting me overdrive it that way. You can also overdrive the square. I'll change the pulse width on the Mother 32 just to create something more interesting. Now let's play around with phase inverting, for example, the sawtooth next to the square. Completely different timbre when you just flip the phase of one of these signals. Even if I back it back down to unity gain, there's a big difference in timbre with just phase inverting one of the controls. Now we also have voltage offsets where we can purposely cause asymmetric distortion. 
For example, I'll go ahead and turn on the offset for the sawtooth, start to drive in the positive region, hear the sound change, and drive into the negative region. Not quite the same temporal change, because again, the Mother 32 is asymmetric in the way it's handling this. I can do the same thing with offsetting the square wave. A slight difference in that high-end buzz. I can also drive it so far into the negative region, the sound almost cuts out. Invert the phase of one, and it is gone altogether. Bring them back into the mix, or just go ahead and cancel their offsets. Now all this has been with the filter wide open, and you may say, well, that's a special case. You wouldn't hear it with the filter closed down, would you? Let's go ahead and set up a little arpeggio. Pull down the cutoff. Take advantage of an envelope running to the filter. Give it a nice little ping there. Phase invert still makes a big difference. And overdrive will as well. So particularly those who are using a semi-modular voice with just one VCO, a nice utility mixer all by itself can give you more timbres than you can get just from the normal output of your VCO. And if it so happens that you have modules that can be overdriven, having the extra gain on the 321 is really handy to go ahead and coax more timbres out of the basic patch. Okay, that's one application. Now another application is offsetting control voltages, not just audio voltages. For example, like many envelopes, the Roland 540 allows me to cycle its envelope to create sort of an LFO sound. So let's go ahead and take one of its outputs, run it into the third channel. As I turn up that input and start it cycling, you'll see it offsetting the output voltage coming out of the 321. But as soon as I plug something into that output, I've removed it from this left-hand sum signal. Now let's take that into something such as, say, VCO modulation, because I want to use it for pulse width mod. Let's go ahead and get a sound going here. Close down where we just have the square wave. Open up the filter. And start fading up this ADSR to give me some pulse width modulation. Now normally, ADSRs only put out positive voltages, zero to eight volts in the case of the Roland. But what I want to do, typically with pulse width modulation, is to change the width in both directions, not just one direction, to give myself more balanced sound and a wider range before the waveform cuts out. So what I'm going to do is carefully dial in an offset in the negative direction. Where that's more centered now. Let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit. longer decay here. Faster speed. I can change the depth on the Mother 32 or right here at the 321. Go ahead and bring the saw back in. Maybe invert. Nah. Like it better like that. Turn off the drone mode. Get another arpeggio going. Slow down. Maybe just a slower evolution of the square. So thanks to this intelligent semi-normaling scheme, I'm using two of the inputs for the 321 for audio letting them be summed, and then go into the auxiliary input on the mother. I'm using the third channel, pulling it out of the mix, and using it directly for different processing. In this case, offsetting an envelope to be an LFO. So that's two typical applications. My third application is going to require a bit more patching, so bear with me with a second while I do a quick magic crossfade and show you a different patch. I've taken apart the previous patch because I want to focus on using the surge wave multiplier. I'm also going to be using a triangle wave out of a disting to feed into the surge. And what I want to show you here is that it's important 
is you get a utility mixer that doesn't just attenuate, but which can also boost signals. Now the green waveform is the triangle out of the disting. Each division on the data is plus or minus two volts, so you see it's about plus or minus eight volts. The blue waveform is the solid tooth out of the mother 32, and it's plus or minus five volts. That's pretty typical for Yarrack audio levels. In contrast, the old Buchla and Surge modular synths used a much lower signal level for audio. They tended to be closer to line level, plus or minus one or two volts. So whenever you use one of these tribute modules, you really need to cut down your rack levels to properly go through these circuits and make them behave the way they were designed to, and then boost them back up to go ahead and process them further through other your rack modules. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my sawtooth out of the mother and focus just on the triangle from the disting, because I'm gonna be using the wave folder in the surge and they like triangles and sine waves. Now I cannot feed this plus or minus eight volts straight into the surge. You completely overdrive it. So I need to take one channel of my three, two, one and use it to attenuate the level of the disting. I'll turn up to unity initially and I'll show you where I have to go from there. Now I'm going to take that output, that attenuated output, feed it into an input on the surge wave multiplier. Take the output of the wave multiplier. And for now, I'm just going to show you the direct level. You'll see that even though we're feeding a triangle in, we're getting somewhere between a sine wave and a square wave back out. It's been seriously clipped because we're driving it way too hard. And I'll even turn the mother 32 into drone mode so you can hear what's going on and we'll see the spectrograph for this final wave. And indeed, it doesn't look exactly like a triangle wave. It has some second harmonic present when there should only be a few odd harmonics. So what I need to do is start cutting back the level that's going into the surge until the output looks back like a triangle again, because I have the folder turned all the way down right now. So I'll start backing this off. It's almost like a sine wave there until we get a shape that looks very much like it should be a peaked triangle. I'm looking over my spectrograph display and I'm making sure that no second harmonic is present because I want this to be a triangle because I want to initially hear how this surge circuit is supposed to behave, what it'd be like with a proper signal level going through it. Okay, secondly, this output level is way too low. I mean, plus or minus one volt? And you can hear how soft the signal is. I want plus or minus five to drive the Moog's filter. So I'm gonna take the output, put it through one channel by three, two, one. Initially look at that, boost it all the way up. Mm, a little bit better. Well, we got another channel. Let's boost it again. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of um, macrame or braid work here with my cables. Run through another channel, the three, two, one. Take the output, boost that all the way up again. Now we're getting a bit more proper signal level. Okay, now that we have this set up, we can go ahead and use the wave folder on the surge to go ahead and get the type of sounds we expect. So that would be the sweep we would expect out of a surge. And indeed, let me get another patch cable here. Go ahead and grab what was my filter envelope and use that to modulate the CV input on the surge to go ahead and put it through an envelope sweep. That's what that surge wave multiplier is supposed to sound like. If we hadn't lowered the level, it'd be up around here as a default. Which is a very cool sound, I still admit. But you'd have to pull back your CV quite a ways to be what would be considered a typical surge wave folder sound. But by being able to pull it back to. Nice triangle in with no bowing. Now we're back to having the module sound the way it's supposed to. But part of modular is making things sound like they're not supposed to. So again, I'm glad to have all that gain available if I do indeed want to overdrive the surge. Turn up the fold amount. 
that's the normal maximum. Let's go ahead and drive it even harder. We have both clipping and intense wave folding going on there. You can see the harmonic spectra is quite different. Nice range right in there. Let's see if we can envelope that. Mix the mode back in. So that's why, in general, you should have utility mixers in your system. This is why I say you really want a utility mixer that can do up to two times amplification at a minimum to go ahead and boost signals to overdrive things on purpose or to go ahead and boost the outputs of particularly soft modules. And I really love the 321 because it has all these great features such as the phase invert, being able to turn the offset on and off, and also these summing buses that are semi-normal if I want or which automatically mix together all the outputs if I want. Very nice little module. 